Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. For today's video, we have La Perrier back with us to be our model. If you all don't remember, she was a model on a video a few months back when I created this heavy Barbie glam look on her. And even though today's look is still gonna be glam, it's gonna be a little bit more wearable. And not only that, but every product I use will be drugstore makeup products. So if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Night Pressed Serum to prep La Perrier's skin. And I'm applying this on with a beauty blender. This product is really interesting because in the packaging, it looks kind of um, like gooey <laughs> in a way where you would think it'd feel heavy on the skin. But in fact, after you apply it, it doesn't look greasy. It doesn't feel greasy or heavy and the skin absorbs it quite nicely. I've been using it on myself these last few days. So far, so good, but I'm gonna give it a little more time and I'll keep you posted. Next, I'm heading over to the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. This is in the shade D60, and I'm also applying this on with the Beauty Blender. I'm focusing this shade mainly around the mouth and the lower half of the face because there is some slight cool toned, grayish tones in this area. So I'm relying on the warmth of this foundation shade to counterbalance those. And then for the rest of the face, I'm going to mix in a lighter shade concealer, which is the same concealer I'll later on be using. Could I just use one shade foundation? <laughs> of course I could, but it's not always that easy sometimes, especially with deeper skin tones. There's usually more than one undertone to consider. So it's a balancing act sometimes between a couple different shade foundations to get a seamless result. Next with the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer in the shade Toffee, I'm going to brighten and conceal the under eye area. Now this is the concealer I was referring to a minute ago that I had mixed into the foundation to change its shade. I've heard of this concealer many of times and I'm so happy I got the chance to use it today. Drugstore or not, it really is a beautiful concealer. This shade is a little too light for our model, but as you'll see, after I apply the concealer on with a concealer brush and blend it out, I'll then flip over the beauty blender to the side I used for the foundation and use it to run over the concealer. And what this does is it uses that leftover foundation to tone down the brightness of that concealer. And like I usually do, I'm blending this concealer up onto the eyelids. Although there are a lot of options nowadays for drugstore eyeshadow primers and even face primers, it's not usually my style to use a primer to begin with, so I didn't want to switch up my usual process, which is to prep the eyelids with concealer. Uh, oh, <laughs> Ew, I, I don't know why I said it like that. I sound like a creepy, happy robot <laughs> to prep the eyelids with concealer. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm becoming delusional. It's four o'clock in the morning, y'all. I feel like I'm, I'm going crazy. I filmed this video so last minute and I've been up all night editing it so I can have it up and post it on my usual Wednesday schedule. So please bear with me if I seem a little off today. Now here I'm contouring using that same CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation, but this is in the shade D80. And I'm applying this on using a blush brush to the forehead and cheekbone area. This girl is so naturally beautiful that I didn't want to get too carried away today with the contour. The last time I did her makeup on my channel, we did a really dramatic Barbie glam. So this time I wanted to create a more subtle look on her that complements her natural beauty and bone structure. If you want to see that heavier glam on her, I'll link down below that Barbie makeup tutorial I'm referring to. But as you see here, after I've applied that contour with the brush, I'm heading back to my beauty blender to blend it in. Now that we have everything looking seamless, I'm gonna set the makeup using the Black Radiance Loose Setting Powder in the shade Cocoa Kisses. I've had this powder for a little while now and it really is a nice powder. I'm applying it on using a fluffy face brush because I don't want this to be packed on. I'm wanting a really sheer amount of this powder on the skin. I want the skin to have a little sheen to it. Plus, the foundation we used is a matte foundation, right? So the skin shouldn't get too out of control shiny anyways. This amount of powder is the perfect amount to lock the makeup into place.
For the under eye area, I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in the shade Medium Deep and using this to set the concealer using my powder puff. At the same time, I'm using this powder to bake the under eye area for a few minutes before wiping it off. Most of the time, you all see me leave the powder on to bake while I'm doing the eye makeup and brows and so on, but this powder is 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 um <laughs> very pigmented. It, it's probably not one I'll use again for baking. Don't get me wrong, the powder itself is great, but in a lighter dose to use in a way such as I did with the Black Radiance powder. To bake, I like using something a little more on the translucent side, whereas this is pretty much a loose foundation powder. And that's not me trying to be a sassy towards Maybelline. I love Maybelline. In fact, it's probably my most favorite drug store brand but I'm just trying to be transparent with you so you don't make the same mistake I did. If you're going to use this powder use it the way it's intended which is to use as a finishing powder and not to bake like I did. So with this blush from Milani in the shade Wild Rose, I'm dusting this onto the apples of her cheeks using a blush brush. As you know already, I'm creating a bold red lip on her today and usually when there's a red lip involved I don't like to go too overboard with blush. I like keeping it really subtle, so most of the saturation is all in the lip color. And once I have that blush applied, I'm once again taking the face brush to brush over everything to assure everything is blended together. Next, using the NYX Highlight and Contour Pro Palette, I'm dipping into the deepest shade in that palette to use as an eyeshadow and buffing this onto the upper lid. This is the only color I'll be using on the eyelids today. Similar to what I was saying about the blush earlier, I also like the look of really simple eye makeup paired with a bold red lip. So with that said, I'm gonna keep this eyeshadow simple and next add to it a thin winged liner. To create that winged liner, I'm using the Revlon Colorstay Skinny Liquid Liner. And as you see here, it's super quick and easy. And that's saying a lot coming from me because a precise winged liner is not my forte, but this made it extremely easy and it turned out beautiful. Next, with the L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black Mascara, I'm gonna coat the lashes before applying on the falsies. I feel like by now, nearly everyone has heard of this mascara. It's a staple for many, many makeup artists, including myself, especially since I prefer using the wand that a mascara comes with rather than the disposable mascara wands. I'll keep stocked up on this mascara to use on my clients, and then when I'm done, I'll either give it to them or I'll keep it in the makeup kit that I create for them. Here, I'm applying on the falsies I was referring to a second ago. These are the Ardell Wispies. They're, they're simple, subtle, and very comfortable to wear. With the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Espresso, I'm gonna fill in and shape the brows. This is one of my favorite brow pencils to use, and if you've watched my channel before, you know that already. You've heard me rant and rave about it several of times. And today, I'm gonna to do just one brow on camera to save a little time, but of course, the same product and technique I'm using on this brow is what I'll be using for the other. Alrighty, now that the lash glue has had some time to dry while we were working on the brows, I'm gonna take my mascara once again and run it through the lashes. This just assures that the lash band is totally bonded to her natural lashes, and in my opinion, it kind of makes the falsies look a little more natural. I don't know. Do you guys do the same thing? Put mascara on after you've applied your lashes? Maybe it's just me. Anyways, I'm also applying some mascara to her bottom lashes. I wanted to keep the lower lash line really clean by not adding any eyeshadow, but I did want it to have a little drama, so that's why I added on this mascara. 
Next, for lips, I'm using the Maybelline Stay Liquid Lipstick in the shade Keep It Red. And on the back of my hand, as you saw there, I mixed in the smallest amount of the black eyeliner just to deepen the shade a bit. And I'll use this to line the lips. That's something I'll do often with the red lip is use a darker red for the border and a brighter red in the center. So instead of having to buy two different shade reds, you just mix in the smallest amount of black eyeliner to make it a tad bit darker. And as you see here, I'm taking the original red shade to finish filling it in the rest of the lip. Now, because I love a dramatic red lip, I'm using this liquid lipstick from the Lip Bar in the shade Boy Trouble to add even more dimension to the center. This shade is a beautiful red orange, and if you're one like myself who loves a super saturated red lip, the best thing you can ever do is add just a dab of an orange shade lipstick to the center, and it changes the game. And with a gloss on top, mm -mm -mm, perfection. The gloss I'm using is this one from LA Girl and it's a clear gloss I'm adding right on top. You all already know my love for a clear gloss, especially in a situation like this where we just worked so hard to create this ombre effect with the lipsticks, we wouldn't want to cover it all up with a gloss that has a color pigment in it, right? So a clear gloss is perfect for getting that high shine finish without having to jeopardize the colors. Lastly, I'm using the e.l.f. Dewy Coconut Setting Mist to set the makeup and to lock it into place, which makes this the final step in creating this all drugstore makeup tutorial on our naturally gorgeous model. There we have it kids. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.